Hey everybody, hope you're doing great today. This is Paul from the Sedoy Aquarium. In today's video, I'm going to provide five different ways that you can use to cycle your aquarium. Some of these are a little faster than others. Some of these methods can be combined. So, for example, the first way I'm going to show is adding ammonia to your tank. You can combine that by adding the live bacteria cultures to your tank. And with these cycling methods, I'm going with a no fish cycle. My preference is a no fish cycle. It's less stress on the fish. Ammonia can burn their gills can cause long-term damage. So we don't want that. We want a healthy tank that's ready to go. Once we add our inhabitants, they're happy. Everything is good to go. So as part of these methods, one important thing to mention is that you should be testing continually. Now, if you're doing something like the ammonia method, adding ammonia to your tank, you want to do that slowly over time and you want to test it over time to see the ammonia levels build up, to see the nitrite levels build up, and then eventually ammonia gone, nitrites gone, and you just have nitrates. So in that case, you might not want to test every day because the ammonia method can take four weeks or more. So you might want to space out that testing. And the main thing you want to do is once you've cycled your system this way, you want to do tests on a daily basis once you have fish in the tank. So you don't want any ammonia spikes. You don't want any nitrite spikes. That's going to harm your fish. So by checking that on a daily basis, if you do have any, you can go treat the water. You can do water changes or you can get some sort of chemical that will lock up the nitrite and lock up the ammonia. That way it won't harm your fish and eventually it'll be processed out of your tank into the form of nitrates which in small quantities nitrates are not harmful to your fish so the first and probably slowest method i would use for cycling my tank is the ammonia method basically taking a bottle of ammonia like this here it's pure ammonia no detergents no colors no scents or anything like that. You just want pure ammonia, ammonia and water. Just take some small amount and just add it to the tank. And what you're doing then is you are adding that ammonia directly to the tank, providing a food source for that bacteria. So that bacteria exists everywhere. It's in this tank right now, but not in a large amount of quantity. But by adding this ammonia, I'm building up that ammonia level over time that bacteria is going to start to take over, start digesting that ammonia, start that whole process where they will convert the ammonia to nitrite and then you will have other bacteria who will also eventually take over and then start converting that nitrite to nitrate. So this process probably takes a couple of weeks if not more depends on the temperature of your tank. The warmer it is obviously the more active your bacteria will be whereas if you left your tank unheated you're just in the process of cycling it you're not in a rush, then it will take a little longer. Another method to use is bottled bacteria. So with this bottled bacteria, basically it has the bacteria you need to process the ammonia to nitrites, as well as process the nitrites to nitrates. So it does kickstart the process, helps speed it up. And in this case, it's a matter of reading the directions, how much it says here based on per gallon so 10 to 15 gallon, you want at least 15 milliliters. Adding a little more is not going to hurt. Adding a little less can slow you down. So just pour it in and then let nature take its course. Now, of course, if you're pouring in bottled bacteria into an empty tank, empty in the sense that it's got water, but it has no fish, it has no live plants, that bacteria is not going to do that great because there's nothing to feed it. So you might want to put in there some fish food or you can even add bottled ammonia like I just did there. In small amounts, you don't want to put too much ammonia because then you can overwhelm the bacteria. Ammonia is an antibacterial and it can eventually kill the bacteria if it's in too much, if it's in too large of a quantity. So just by adding a few drops of ammonia, you're feeding that bacteria, you're starting that process. So that way when you do add the fish, you'll have that cycle ready to go. As I mentioned before and as I'm going to mention again, Testing is always important, especially when you're doing this, you always want to test on a daily basis. Check where your ammonia levels are. If you mistakenly add too much ammonia, it's gotten too high, you can do a water change to reduce that ammonia. If you don't have enough ammonia in there where it's nothing showing up, then you can always add a little more ammonia just to build that level up to start getting your nitrites build up and then your nitrates build up. One of the other ways that you can cycle a tank is by getting decorations from another tank that's been cycled for a while. So let's say, for example, these snail shells over here, I pull them out from another tank that's got other shell dwellers. They've been 
up and running for more than a couple months. So usually these decorations, whether it be the plants over there or the shells, they should have a bacteria colony on them. Obviously it's not going to be as great where you have something like a filter over here like you have this one. But in that case, you know, I can grab this shell, just drop it in there. That helps inoculate the bacteria colonies in this tank. One thing I would do is it rub it on the filter over here just so you get some of that bacteria transferred to the existing filter. That'll help the bacteria grow faster on that filter. There's more running water over that filter. And with that running water, it's going to be easier to grab hold of that ammonia and nitrate that's passing by. And so the bacteria is going to enjoy that, going to consume all that, and grow much quicker on the filter compared to your decorations. But that's why you want to use decorations, you know, whether it be plants, rocks, snail shells in this case, or something else from an existing tank that's been in that tank for a while. It's a, it's a well-established, mature tank. So by doing that, then you're introducing bacteria. So you could also use substrate as well. You could grab a handful of substrate from your other tank, put that substrate in your tank, and that also help colonize your tank. Again, you want to keep it close to the filter where the filter is going to be running. So that way the bacteria gets taken up by the filter and the bacteria colony will establish much quicker on the place where the water is flowing the most and that would be the filter. If you've been finding this video to be helpful so far, please hit that like button so others can find it too. I pulled this filter out. It's just a sponge filter from my well-established tank. See the mess? Basically this mold that's going to be flushed out. Cleaned it up. Now the mom has been cleaned out. The filter still has a lot of bacteria on it. I'm just gonna take it in there and swish it around. And do the same thing, touch it a little bit. It's obviously gonna look dirty because there's still a lot of mom in there. This water is gonna settle after a while. And the filter will pick up a lot of the debris. But that's how I did the other tank up there. Same process, just take an existing filter, squeeze out the drippings in there, let the tank settle. Yes, it is a little messy, but the process of putting all that material in there, all that mulm, included a lot of bacteria, and that's just going to help seed that tank, and that's going to be very rapidly cycled. Kind of hard to see this mulm water here, trying to show it without spilling it all over the floor. Still very useful. I'm going to pour it out in the garden. I recommend don't dump it in the drain, but pour it out in the garden instead. Your garden will thank you for it. As you can see here, this is the next morning. Everything has settled down in the tank. So I can see some of the mulm in the filter over there, as well as I can see the mulm on some of the plants. So the filter looks a little whiter because of the mulm. It's got because of the mulm that's taken up and it's also settled on some of the plants too. Once they're fish in this tank, I'm expecting everything to kind of get shuffled around again. The plants will get cleaned up again. So the final method in my five tips on how to get your aquarium cycled, I've covered this in a previous video. So it involves taking, say, this filter right here, which is in a well-established tank, and then putting it into this tank over here. So this is a new filter, obviously not established, not fully cycled, but by taking a filter from an established tank, dropping it in this new tank, it becomes pretty quickly cycled. Now obviously the tank's not mature, still some got some issues there with the lack of tank maturity, but depending on your fish load, your bio load, putting an, an existing filter into the new tank will help cycle it and will keep your fish safe. That doesn't prevent you from continually checking all the parameters, doing tests on a daily basis. And with these filters here, like I've got two in this tank, there's one on this side over here, another one over here. So it's fine for me to pull one out, drop it in this tank over here. But if it were the case where I only had one filter in this tank, even though this is a mature tank compared to this tank over here, I would not pull the filter out. Instead, I would use one of the other methods I had discussed in this video. 
So those are five different methods you can use to cycle your tank. Each one has its own pros and cons, has its own different time frame, but pretty much any fish keeper can do, any fish keeper should be doing to make sure your fish are healthy and safe. So anytime you bring in filters, decorations, substrate, something else from another aquarium, you end up running the risk of contaminating your new aquarium with whatever harmful substances or whatever harmful creatures might be in the old aquarium. So you need to trust the tank where these items are coming from. So for example, you're putting plants in there if, and you've got a bunch of pest in that tank. When you move that plant into your new tank, you run the risk of moving those pest snails into that tank as well. So maybe moving plants and substrate might not work. Similarly with filters, there could be bad pathogens on those filters. Whatever sicknesses your fish might have in one tank can be transferred to the new tank. So you always want to be careful with that. In my case, I'm using tanks that I have here. They're all my tanks. I'm not using any filters from any tanks that are not in my basement here. So I know the quality of my water. I know the quality of my tanks. And it's not a big concern for me, but it's a but let's say I were going from a friend's house, then I might pay a little closer attention to their tanks, ask them, hey, how's the health of your tank? And does it make sense for me to use their filter or whatnot? Using a filter squeezing might be a little better because really you're just looking to get the bacteria from this filter. You don't really care about the, all the other stuff. Like in this case too, I introduced a lot of mulm from one of my other tanks. Now that mulm can, can have bad stuff in it that will impact your fish. So that's always one thing one needs to be careful of. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.